welcome to another Zoo Creates at Home. I'm Tegan and I have Jessica here with me today to make some blow art. So today we're gonna be mixing some watercolors and using those to create some natural landscapes, some nature scapes. So to get started, you'll need a white piece of paper and I'm gonna use watercolors that we have here and Jessica is gonna show us how we can use food coloring to make our own watercolors at home. Yeah, so to make um, your own watercolors, if you don't have um, watercolors at home, what I just did was I filled up a couple of cups. I'm only using two colors. I'm gonna attempt to make a tree. Um, so I have some brown and some green, but I just used water and then squirted some food coloring in. And so if you're wanting um, different colors, you can mix them together. That's how I made brown. Um, otherwise, you can just make separate ones. So just however dark you want it to be. Awesome. And then of course you'll need a straw. So that's how we're gonna make it blow art today. And today me and Jessica brought our reusable straws. We've got some stainless steel straws, but maybe you've got some reusable plastic ones at home. Um, here at the zoo, we try really hard to uh, reduce our use of plastics. We even have a program here at the zoo called Stomp the Straw where you can sign a pledge and be very conscious of your use of straws and try to eliminate the use of straws if you can. But sometimes that's really hard, especially in times like these where we want to be very safe about germs. So I'm gonna use that straw to grab some of the water and I kind of do that you can suction some by putting your straw into the water and then putting your finger on the top, that kind of grabs the water. But if you get some dots on there, then you can blow through your straw and it'll move the water beads around on the paper. So Jessica's working on a tree. Maybe you want to do like an ocean picture. You could make some coral. Or maybe you're making some flowers. This is a really fun activity for kids to do because a lot of times you tell them not to make a mess when they're using straws. I know my kids like to blow bubbles and so it's a really fun activity for them to do at home. And every picture is gonna turn out different. So that's fun too. Awesome. It's really fun to see the colors mix on your paper too. Make some new colors. Awesome, so I've got a couple colors on there. They look kind of like some bushes or plants, maybe some deserty plants because I've got some brown on there. And then we're also gonna use a little bit of tissue paper. You can use other things that you have at home to add some more decoration. We just happen to have some tissue paper that we're gonna use to make our picture more 3D looking. Awesome. You can get as creative as you'd like with these pictures. Um, if you're making an ocean picture, something that's fun to do is you can also add some sand to the bottom. Right. That would be really fun for them to do. And then it's like the sandy ocean bottom. Or you could go like, I could go after this, I could go outside and get some leaves and add actual leaves to my tree. That would yeah. be a fun addition to add or maybe some flowers as well. Yes, because that blow, the blow art really, it gets that branching quality that you mm -hmm. see in trees. Or you could even, your art could be the animals and you go outside and add natural items like leaves and grass and stuff to make the landscaping if your art is the animals. So 
So I'm also, one other thing you can do, I'm using my straw to make some dots. So I'm gonna put, use the dots to look like flowers in my tree here, my tree or bush. That circle end of it makes nice circles on my page. Awesome. And sometimes the water kind of gets stuck. And so if you tilt your page a little bit to get the water to rotate around, because water likes to take the smooth, the easiest path on your paper. See if I can get a little bit more green on my tree. Yours is a lot brighter than mine is, Tegan. Awesome. More leaves and some more. Cool. So I'll turn that around. I think I'm almost finished with my picture. Okay, I can turn mine around too. And of course, you can make a whole bunch of different paper or pictures and once they dry, you can hang them on your refrigerator as well. And I brought an animal visitor for us to see today, Tegan. So I'm awesome. going to get my mask and gloves on. Okay, well I'll get my mask on. Very cool. Okay. So as always, please share any of your crafts with us. We'd love to see pictures online. You can post them on Facebook underneath uh, the in the captions for this video and we'll definitely check them out. We've been seeing lots of awesome crafts from everybody throughout all these zoo creates. You're doing such a wonderful job. All right. Cool. Okay, so here I have Niles. And Niles is a plated lizard. And you said you made kind of a deserty landscape. So that is where Niles can be found out in the wild. He would live in a dry, sandy desert. And as you can see by his coloring, he would blend in really well which means he has really good camouflage. That's what we, the word we use when we say an animal blends in really well. He probably wouldn't care much for a forest like I drew. So I did a, a tree, he probably wouldn't care much for a forest because he's not the best at climbing. He does have really sharp claws, but he uses that more to um, keep, um, keep his grip, like if, on, if he's on like a rock or something like that, he's gonna use his claws more to um, stay, stay put if a predator comes up. If he, one of his biggest defenses is that he, if you can see, he's very, he's very flat. And so um, he likes to wedge himself in between rocks if he feels scared. And he's very, very fast. And while he's a lizard, when he moves around, he actually moves his body in the same way that a snake does. So he kind of slithers across the ground too. Um, one of the things that I like about Niles is on the side of his face, he has a really pretty blue stripe on his cheek. And so a lot of times when we see bright colors out in the wild, um, what they mean, especially on things like lizards, is that it's a warning signal for predators saying, oh, you don't want to eat me. I might, be, I might be toxic or I might taste bad. So um, that is one of the warning signs. Now, L Niles here is not toxic. He's kind of like our blue tongue skinks where he um, uh, is just pretending. He's just trying to using it as a defense. Like if you've seen our blue tongue skinks, they have a blue tongue um, kind of mimicking the same way, but um, he is not toxic. You can also see a lot of questions we get is what are those holes on the side of his head? Do you know what those are? <gasps> Are they, he doesn't have any ears sticking up. Yep, so, so those be his ears? Those are his ears. And one really cool thing about um, reptiles like lizards and snakes is that 
not only, um, a lot of them have ears, um, ear holes, but a lot of them also hear through vibrations. So um, they hear a lot, they get a lot of sound actually through their mouth as well. So they can get sound through their ears, but a lot of, um, especially snakes, um, they, they hear vibrations. So kind of like if you're banging on a table, you can kind of feel those vibrations. Um, if you, especially if you put your ear on the table, um, you'll, feel, you'll, you'll hear a lot, a lot differently. And so snakes and lizards do the same. Do you know what we call the things that's covering his body? So it looks kind of like armor. So I would want to say, like you, like you said, his name is a plated lizard. There might be plates, but are they scales like we've learned about with the snakes? Absolutely. So since he's a reptile, he's covered in scales. All reptiles have scales. And unlike uh, turtles, tortoises, and like crocodiles, um, their scales shed off rather frequently, just like snakes do. Now when snakes shed their scales, so it kind of seems weird when I say they shed their scales, but their scales don't grow. So it's kind of like, I like to compare that to our clothes. So our clothes don't grow with us. When we grow up, we have to get new clothes. We have to get bigger clothes. And so um, snakes and lizards have to do the same thing. Their scales don't grow with them. So they have, or so once their scales grow, that's as big as they're gonna get. So eventually they're gonna outgrow them or they might get damaged. So they need to um, shed them off and they'll have new ones underneath. And so you can even see on the back of his, uh, on his back here, he's got some scales that are kind of starting to shed off. Snakes, we know, um, it's really cool to go out on a nature walk and find a big, long snake shed. So snakes will shed off their scales in one big, long chunk. But lizards don't do that. Um, they more shed off pieces, so they like flake off. So it may take him um, a really long time to shed his entire body. All right, do you have any questions about Niles? Um, does Niles use his tongue like a snake does? So he does stick his tongue out a little bit, not quite as often as we see snakes stick their tongues out, but lizards will use their tongues very similarly to, snake, to snakes. And so he does have nostrils. You can see his big nostrils. So um, he does have a nose like we do, and that's how he breathes, through. he breathes through his nose, just like we would. But what he's using his tongue for is he uses that for smelling. And so we say he's using it for smelling, but really what he's doing is he's tasting the air and that's telling him what's around him. So we, we breathe through our nose and smell that way. And we, what we're doing is we're smelling teeny tiny little bits of whatever's floating around. So if you're smelling brownies baking in the oven, there's actually really small invisible pieces of brownie floating through the air and we're breathing those in through our nose. And so what he's doing is he's licking up all those little pieces of brownie and that's how he can tell what's around him. And so something that he might be smelling for, um, he'd be smelling for predators, like some large birds or some large mammals that want to eat him. Um, he also is smelling for food. So the food that he likes to eat, he's an omnivore. Do you know what an omnivore is? That means that he eats meat and vegetables. That's right. So he likes to eat lettuce and fruit but he also loves to eat crickets. So we give him crickets here at the zoo and those are probably one of his favorite treats to eat. And it's really fun to watch him because we'll open his enclosure and we'll toss in some crickets and he's kind of acting like he's sleeping and then all of a sudden he just wakes up because he can smell them. All right. Okay, well thank you guys for joining us on Zoo Creates today. We look forward to seeing all of your pictures um, that you post and we hope to see you guys again on Friday. Awesome, thanks guys, bye. bye.